Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Russell Nimitz sitting in for Kevin Auctioner. Thanks for joining us. You know, it doesn't matter what sector of the U.S. beef industry you're involved with, demand matters. And cattle prices are influenced not only by strong domestic demand, but also by international consumers of U.S. beef. In fact, the importance of U.S. beef exports has been well documented, and economic conditions worldwide definitely do have an impact on producers. So today, we're going to spend a little bit of our time discussing U.S. beef exports and sharing thoughts, ideas, and insights about trade issues that we are all focused on. Joining us today are a few people who live and breathe the cattle business, and they're here today to share some of their thoughts on the importance of beef exports worldwide. Let me first introduce the folks with me today. Kevin Kester is a fifth generation California rancher. His family has a yearling stalker and commercial cow calf operation, and Kevin also serves as NCBA's vice president. Missy Bonds is a stalker operator from Texas. Missy is the youngest female to be elected to the board of directors for the Texas and Southwest Cattle Raisers Association. Renee Strickland and her husband have a commercial Brangus herd on their ranch in Southwest Florida. Renee also serves as president of the U.S. Livestock Exporters Association. And Jack Field is a cattle producer from Washington State. And Jack also serves as executive vice president of the Washington Cattlemen's Association. We'll get the panel's thoughts on international demand in just a moment, but first, Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Brian Baxter has this overview about the importance of global markets for U.S. beef. There may have been times in the past when it seemed like a cattle producer didn't have to think much about what happened beyond the ranch gate. But those days are long gone and producers know the market for U.S. beef today is global. We've increased the number of cattle out there. Quality is extremely good, but we have to have access to uh, play on the global field if we're going to continue to maintain uh, these kind of markets and grow our industry, really, because it's 96 percent of all people live outside of our borders, and that's where the future for increasing uh, demand is. In fact, in the first half of 2016, the U.S. exported more than $2.9 billion worth of U.S. beef. And for the past 40 years, the U.S. Meat Export Federation has been working to build U.S. beef export markets worldwide. We've worked uh, aggressively on behalf of the beef industry for the last 40 years. It was started by leaders in the beef industry who recognized the, the growth opportunity in the export markets. 40 years later, uh, just taking Japan alone, we've exported just in the last 30 years $33 billion worth of beef to Japan. So I think uh, our forefathers who had this vision, I think it's been realized. So far in 2016, the export value of a beef animal was nearly $250 per head. And with growing populations in Asia, the Middle East, and Latin America, export markets look to offer solid, long-term demand opportunities for U.S. beef. I think you would find the average rancher in Oregon, compared to five, six, seven years ago, at the coffee shop is saying exports are good. Free trade agreements are good for beef. Just in the last eight years alone, when we hear people talk about trade, should we or shouldn't we, we've exported $1 trillion in U.S. agricultural exports in eight years. So the trade is good. It's, it's vital to the U.S. Uh, agriculture and especially to the U.S. beef industry. I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen.